Hi everyone, welcome to the shack again. More bad news. My Sony ICF 2001 portable shortwave receiver has finally given up the ghost. It's died. Um, I only paid 50 quid for it on eBay a few years ago. Um, so, and I've had it a few years, so it's no great loss, but uh, still sad nevertheless. And there is a bit of a backstory to it. Um, I can remember seeing this radio in the Sony shop in Oxford, I think. I was with my dad in around 1980, so I was just a little kid. And at the time, radios like the Binotone Worldstar were like my hardware uh, heroes, uh, the radios that I aspired to own. And when I saw this radio in the shop window, I think it was like 360-odd quid or something, um, a huge amount of money back in the day. Uh, it was literally like something had landed from another planet. I'd never seen anything like it. Of course, we all know now that the uh, 2001, the original version of the 2001 from 1980 was the world's first portable uh, PLL uh, receiver with direct frequency input, etc. And, um, you know, it broke new ground um, for uh, portable uh, shortwave receivers. Um, prior to this, you know, radios were very different. Think of the Zenith Transoceanic, that kind of thing. Uh, huge radios, uh, huge objects taking lots of batteries. Um, I've got a Hacker Super Sovereign from around about the same time, maybe slightly earlier. You know, this thing literally weighs about 10 kilos with all the D-cell batteries in it. Um, so th this radio was remarkable uh, for its time. Um, and mine has developed a fault. It won't power up properly. There's several potential issues. It could be the battery terminals in the AA battery compartment, which are there to drive, I think, to drive the display and, and the computer. And then there's a D cells to run the radio. And apparently the, the contacts in the AA battery compartment might be the issue or the wires from it. And there's a ribbon cable apparently as well um, that's prone to breaking. And I've also read that um, similar problem with the power switch. But uh, anyway, I've, I've sort of tried to fix it. Um, and I can't and I don't have the time really either. Uh, and it only costs 50 quid. Uh, it's a shame because cosmetically it's in really good shape, but uh, it's dead now, and um, and I and I'm sure I won't ever use it again. They say that um, you should never meet your heroes, and in some ways I wish I'd never bought this radio. Not because it's now broken, after probably two, three, four years, whatever it is, um, but because this would this radio was in, was an impossible aspiration of mine when I was a small kid. It was so expensive. Um, and when I finally got hold of uh, one of these, uh, well, this unit, I found that it was absolutely awful in terms of um, susceptibility to QRM. You know, it's, you, it's ridiculously noisy inside the house. Um, it doesn't, the shielding inside just seems to be non-existent or at least very poor. But then that's not surprising because this radio was designed Back in the day when, you know, it wasn't necessarily typical to have kind of a noise floor of, you know, minus 90 or minus 100 dB. You know, you switch on a radio these days, one of my ham rigs, and it's not, it's completely normal to have, a, you know, a noise floor of S5 or S4, sometimes higher. Um, so this radio wasn't designed with that in mind. Um, Sensitivity is okay. Selectivity, okay. Um, not a patch on the, on its younger uh sibling the uh, 2001d of course uh, and not a patch on for example the sony pl 880 or the even the eaton satellite which are obviously much much smaller um so uh it was a bit of a disappointment in terms of performance um and yeah and now that it's actually broken yeah it's, i almost wish that i'd never bought it um but uh, but there you go um so the world's first portable PLL direct frequency input uh, radio receiver in uh, in my shack has now died. Uh, so uh, it's a sad day today. This radio's died, and there's no more WRTH um, from 2022. Um, so uh, yeah, 
but I thought I'd share it with you. Um, and uh, uh, if I if I if I ever bump into anybody who lives near enough that wants to have a crack at repairing it, that would be great. Um, but uh, it's just not worth the money uh, really uh, to spend um a lot on getting it fixed um you know it'd be easier to, to buy another one but for the reasons i've already given I, i'm sure i won't because uh although it's nice to have this as an object uh in the shack now and takes me back to when i was a kid um as, a, as an actual receiver it's really of only sort of limited use i, I you know and it does and it pains me to say that but uh, that's the truth so there you go one dead radio and one dead uh radio related publication today <laughs> Uh, not a very good day for the hobby, but um, still plenty more um, uh, to do. Uh, one other thing, actually. Um, uh, apparently, John Lennon owned uh, this radio, and this appears on Thomas's website as well, or the, and in other places. But if you, this is him at a record, in a recording studio, and if you look closely on the table, there indeed is a Sony ICF 2001. Um, it's speculated that um, Lennon liked to keep in touch with the news back in the UK via the BBC World Service. Um, and um, and although it's not absolutely certain that it's his radio uh, in this picture in the recording studio, someone else actually wrote in and said, well, actually, it is his radio because there's a photograph of him in his office in the Dakota building in New York, where he lived. This is also New York. Uh, and the radio appears there as well. So it does seem very likely that John had one of these. Um, and uh, and I guess back in the day, when um, there was not there wasn't so much QRM, uh, it worked very well. So uh, so there you go, the Sony ICF two thousand and one from nineteen eighty. Um, mine's dead. Um, uh, I know some of you have got one. Um, if you drop me a comment, uh, let me know if you if yours is still working. Anyway, again, I thought I'd share it with you. Uh, a sad day, but um, as you know, I've got a few other radios to play with, so it's not the end of the world. Thanks for watching and 73.